Let's take another look at Comet 2017 K2. Yeah, it's still available up in the evening sky. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. So where is the comet now? Well, it just passed its closest uh, approach to the Earth, and it's still about uh, 1.8 AU, or astronomical units, away from the Earth. An astronomical unit, remember, is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, approximately 93 million miles. So this puts it at about, what, 170 million miles away. Anyway, it's over here up in the nighttime sky. It's 11 o'clock on this uh, picture right here. And there you can see it medium high in the south and looking at some of the features in uh, Stellarium. Uh, there you can see it. It's uh, north or it's above the um, uh, uh, Scorpius. And there is the bright red star Antares and over here in Ophiuchus and the big bright star yellow star Arcturus is over here. So it's kind of like in between Arcturus and Antares, two very bright stars up in the summertime sky. It's going to be uh, in this position slowly drifting closer and closer to the Scorpius and uh, uh, to the, uh, the Scorpion and it will remain up in the sky for about three months at least uh, probably the rest of July, uh, August and September start losing it by October but you'll never get to see it with your uh, with the unaided eye. Right now the magnitude is about as bright as it's going to get 7.0 and uh, you know you can't see that without the aid of binoculars and even that you probably need a telescope to see it and indeed we did see it I did see it with the telescope now in deep sky stackard uh, I learned something new to better fine-tune the position of the comet when you go into comet uh, editing mode so you click on the comet of course for that now it's going to try to put the uh, uh, area where it thinks the comet is located. In this case, it, it did a pretty good job. But if you're not certain about how, how to do that, just uh, use your mouse roller button and you can zoom in on that, all right, and so forth and what have you. And you can really fine tune it. Now you can see uh, on the upper left hand corner there, you have it right over this the comet itself. You can move the mouse, it's very right right there and then click it right there you got that dead-eyed center now that's important if it's not quite centered uh, it, it will cause uh, it to uh, be blurred actually after you stack it so do this for every file you go to every file and you try to do it each time you go to a new file it'll zoom out you just want to zoom in just keep your mouse over the center as you zoom in with the mouse wheel and there you can see um, right there I'm going to put the uh, center and again you need to do this for every single file and I had 119 files I did this with but anyway I did it and the results came out with a much better picture than I did earlier so let's take a look at some of those so let's take a look at the settings that I used in uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Now this was a monochrome camera, so I'm using the monochrome uh, settings. And uh, just go into your settings, click on settings right over here, and uh, go into stacking settings. All right. Now, first of all, you got the comet mode. And if you want to do the um, comet stacking, this will center it on the comet and ignore the stars. It'll be just uh, centering each one on the comet, and the stars will be blurry as noted in this picture. Now, I notice you know, it's 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 a good idea not to use too many frames on this, or else it'll go crazy. But uh, particularly when you use the stars and the comet stacking over here, you know, it tries to keep the stars straight uh, and the comet uh, uh, focused as well. But it, you know, after about more than ten files, image files, it starts having difficulties doing that. In comet stacking, I'll show you the example I have on that with a multi amount of images. And then standard stacking, uh, to get the comet uh, with the sharp stars and the sharp comet, you must use not too many files um, uh, as far as time-wise. Uh, if the comet is moving at a fairly high rate of speed, which this one is, uh, it's going to be um, blurred if you have more than, say, uh, 20 minutes worth of data. So. 
I used uh, uh, 10 frames, which is what, 20 minutes of, of, of data, and this is the result. Light frame, you, I, I have on auto adaptive weighted average, and I took the default value there of five, and uh, this seems to have given me the best results. You can play around with these and so forth and what have you, uh, but the uh, auto adapted weighted average seemed to work quite well. And just leave the dark flats and bias offsets just uh, uh, by themselves. Take the default values, uh, take the automatic for the um, alignment and so forth, and uh, say okay. And that's all you have to do. And then go ahead and stack. So here is the two final products. This one over here is the one uh, where I kind of guessed where the center of the. Um, core of the comet was located when I uh, set it up in Deep Sky Stacker and this is the one where I was more intent on getting that center the core center directly into the middle of the uh, the core itself uh, zooming in on the uh, Deep Sky Stacker so you know they look the same a little bit but you can see a little bit of a fuzziness over here let's zoom in on that you can see the uh, the core itself it has a you know, some double stars in there. It looks like double stars, double cores, whatever. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it looks good, but it's not great. Uh, this one here, when you look at it, zooming in, you can see that core is dead on. Uh, nice curved, nice circular core. This one, you can see it's stretched out. So yeah, it does make a difference by uh, paying attention in Deep Sky Stacker on getting that uh, comet centered in the uh, each individual frame by zooming in on the uh, deep sky stacker. So yeah, it makes a big difference. And uh, there's the uh, the final product right there. Well, there you have it, Comet 2017 K2. It's still uh, viewable up in the southern sky. It will be all summer long, but you need a small telescope to see this comet. You cannot see it with the naked eye. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, all in a sky near you. Yeah, not just these comets, but you have nebula, you have the galaxy, and they're all available in the sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.